read again in Ezekiel chapter 45. Division of the land. When you allot the land as an inheritance, you are to present to the Lord a portion of the land as a sacred district, 25,000 cubits long and 20,000 cubits wide. The entire area will be holy. Of this, a section 500 cubits square is to be the sanctuary with uh, 50 cubits around it for open land. In the sacred district, measure off a section 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide, and it will be the sanctuary, the most holy place. It will be the sacred portion of the land for the priests who minister in the sanctuary and who draw near to minister before the Lord. It will be a place for their houses as well as a holy place for the sanctuary, an area 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide will belong to the Levites who serve in the temple as their possession for towns to live in. You are to give the city as its property an area 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long adjoining the sacred portion. It will belong to the whole house of Israel. The prince will have the land uh, bordering each side of the area formed by the sacred district and the property of the city. It will ex extend westward from the west side and eastward from the east side, running lengthwise from the west uh, western t uh, to the eastern border parallel to one of the tribal portions. This land will be his possession in Israel. And my princes will no longer oppress my people, but will allow the house of Israel to possess the land uh, according to their tribes. This is what the sovereign Lord says. You have gone far enough, O princes of Israel. Give up your violence and oppression and do what is just and right. Stop disposing dispossessing my people declares the sovereign lord you are to use accurate scale scales an accurate epa, epa or epa and an accurate bath the epa and the bath are to be the same size the bath containing a tenth of a homer and the epa a tenth of a homer the homer is to be the standard measure for both the shekel is the consistent uh, uh, the shekel is the con consist of 20 geras. Uh, I'm sorry. The shekel is to consist of 20 geras, 20 shekels plus 25 shekels plus 15 shekels equal one mina. <laughs> so there's a lot of measurements and um, uh, things here that was utilized in the Old Testament and the old um, and the, and these are translations. Remember from uh, Old Hebrew, Aramaic, and such. Um, and I believe Ezekiel is, I want to say it was Hebrew, but I'm not quite sure. I believe it was just in Hebrew, but if you uh, know more, put it down in the comments. Um, so there is a lot here when it comes to what the Lord is providing from what is happening to Ezekiel, what will be happening uh, to Ezekiel, how it will go during a time of peace, a time of prosperity, a time for things to be done as they were to be done. And um, this is, so this is a prophecy. This is a vision and a prophecy of what things are to be and are to come. And uh, remember um, that there is, Ezekiel here, seeing these things and providing this information to the people of Israel, to the people who were down because of their own um, desires, their own things that they were doing, which were sinful and wicked. And so the consequences were playing out and the Lord was allowing for those consequences to happen. But at the same time, he was utilizing Ezekiel to tell them, kind of mirroring, like, this is how it's going to be done because it's my will and this is how it's going to be done. And I'm telling you, this is, it's going to be done this way. And because there's hope that be, that's because there will be a renewance. There will be a cleansing um, of your spirit, of your soul, of yourself. You will, I will um, 
see to it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure that the renewal happens. And so he's providing the guidance and he's providing the hope. He's letting them know, even though you didn't follow the commands, like, you know, during the first covenant, I'm going to make something new. I'm going to make something that is going to be eternal. And these things are going, and I'm showing you a reflection of what is going to, how it's going to be and what's going to happen. And that is amazing. That is amazing because that is showing the people that they're not forgotten, that they're not being um, just completely wiped away and the Lord's through with them. He's He is never through with us. He loves us that much. He loves us and he has done everything possible to make it the easiest for us to live eternal, uh, eternally, live in eternity with our Lord and Savior. So this is just amazing, just how expansive this is and how that the uh, people, the priests will be able to serve the Lord and the princes, the people who will be in charge. He's telling them um, that they will no longer be uh, um, using, uh, uh, basically, making them um, oppress, you know, oppressing the people, uh, being wicked, not um, not leading them righteously, um, using misappropriate skills. He's telling them, no, this is how it's going to be. You're going to be utilizing appropriate justi justifying scales and measurements, and you're going to live righteously because the Lord is righteous. And, and so that is amazing. And bringing past to present, there's a lot here. Um, so though we, we may slip and fall, the Lord understands and the Lord is there to help pick us back up and help us to be guided to get over, get over what it is, meaning like going to be able to be healed, going to be able to recover, going to be able to learn and grow in the Lord. And so there's so much here that we can take and understand that the Lord wants to show us and he is showing us what it is to be right, what it is to be just, what it is to be correct, what it is to be, um, to show, to show others um, and be correct, uh, be honest, be truthful, be, a, a, be an example, show love to others. Um, before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?